The new vice president in charge of programming will be here shortly, Mr. William Briggs. Now, we have a permanent office for him to use right now, so we'll put him in 206 for the time being. Yes, sir. Get him a secretary, and you'd better have a page boy go down, open it up, and see if it needs cleaning or anything. If uh, Mr. Briggs gets here, why, well, show him right in. Oh, hi, Pat. I brought something for you. Well, thank you, Mickey. Oh, by the way, the new vice president, Mr. Briggs, is arriving today. Where are they going to find room for another vice president around here? Yeah, they're making room. <laughs> Mr. Lawford was transferred east, and Mr. Briggs is now in charge of programming. No kidding. Gosh, maybe this is my day. Maybe Mr. Briggs will be open to some changes and some new ideas. Now, Mickey, you're not going to pester him the way you did Mr. Lawford. Pat, don't you realize this may be my big chance to become an announcer? Mr. Lawford didn't think I have any talent, but Briggs might at least be on the ball. Well, restrain yourself, Mickey. Give him a chance to hang up his hat. You know what they need around here, Pat, is a new, young, fresh, dynamic sportscaster. Yes. And friends, they're standing at the gate. And in just a moment, they'll be away in the couch. Cracker Jack. Cracker Jack is standing there like the gentleman that he is. And uh, on the far outside, Boo Bunny. Uh, look out, Boo Bunny. Look out. It's not time to go yet. And in just a moment, uh, they'll be going around. The and they're away. And the Cracker Jack on the ring. Got away in far from the outside. Comes Boo Bunny. Uh, run along with him. And down that back side, sleep away. Here by two legs is Cracker Jack out in front by three legs. And Boo Bunny on the outside says, I'll run with you. Cracker Jack, they've got some three sixteenths of a mile to come. And it's still Cracker Jack far out in front. And on the outside, coming fast, is Mr. Brown. Who's the... <laughs> I hope I finish in the money. Yeah. Won't you have some soda pop? <laughs> I hate to drag you away from your sport cast, Mr. Coram. Uh, no, that wasn't Mr. Coram. That was uh, supposed to be Clem McCarthy. <laughs> Pat, did you tell Mr. McCarthy to get room 206 ready for Mr. Briggs? Well, I was going to, but before I knew it, we were off to the races. <laughs> well, uh, I'll take care of it right away, sir. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, sir. Excuse me. That's quite all right, young man. This, this fountain, it's, sir. I'm sorry. It's, it's, can you tell me, where can I find Mr. Brown's office? Oh, you, you just missed it. It's right around the corner. First office on the right, 284, sir. Thank you. Yes, I'm sorry again. You know, this. you should have seen it before we had it fixed. It... <laughs> I'm down in 206. Pat, uh, it's not very clean and it needs some tidying up. Can you send a janitor down here right away? Do me a favor. The new vice president just arrived. He's in with Mr. Brown now. He'll be going down to his office right away. Straighten it up as much as you can until I can get a janitor. All right. All right, I'll take care of it, Pat. Thanks. By the way, Brown, you have a page here by the name of Mulligan? Yes, Mickey Mulligan. <laughs> That's him. Just before I left New York, Lawford mentioned him. Really? Yes, he made kind of a strange statement. He said, beware of Mulligan. <laughs> I wonder what he meant by that. Oh, uh, Pat, would you please show Mr. Briggs down to his office? Well, I'll find my way. After all, I have to get to know my way around sooner or later. Well, all right. Do you have the key to 206? Here it is. There you are. Thank you. Oh, that's a beautiful keychain. Yes, isn't it? Mrs. Briggs gave it to me for my birthday. She has excellent taste. Thank you. We'll have a permanent office for you, first of the week. I'll be fine. Miss Harding, it seems your boyfriend's fame has spread all the way to New York. Mulligan versus Briggs. <laughs> I wonder how it'll turn out. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Excuse me. I, I didn't mean Thank to. You. Yes, sir. 
I just heard you at the door, and I... All right, we all make mistakes sometimes. Well, I've, I've been trying to clean up your office, sir. It looks fine. Thank you. Don't you think we could move the desk back just a little it, it bit? It looks fine. Fine. We'll add a little depth to the room, well, sir. Yes. Uh, I've straightened up it's, everything. It's very nice. Thank you, Mr... Uh, Mulligan. Yes. Mulligan. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh... <laughs> Mickey Mulligan? Why, yes, sir. You, you've heard of me? Yes. I'm not going to let it defeat me. Mulligan? We're going to get along, you and I. I'm no Lawford. He might take the easy way out, get himself elected vice chairman of the board just to be moved away from here. But no man is going to get me down, Mulligan. No man. Did, did you hurt yourself, sir? Fine, Mulligan. Fine. You're not going to get me down. Oh. I'm made of sterner stuff. Uh, pardon me, sir, but there is something I would like to discuss with you. Yes? Well, sir, I don't plan on being a page all of my life, and I was just wondering, now that you're the head of programming, couldn't you possibly give me a chance as an announcer or, or, or fit me in as, as say, a, a sportscaster? Well, I don't know. I, uh... um, you know, Mr. Lawford, he, he never gave me a chance, sir. I, I have talent. I suppose Lawford let his personal feelings interfere with his business judgment. <laughs> I'm not going to let my personal feelings interfere. <laughs> I'm going to give you a chance, Mulligan. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, let me see. Where can we fit you in? Oh, well, you'll need a lot of pacing room. Vice presidents need a lot of room to pace. Now, yes. if you want to be an announcer, you need training. Yes, sir, lots of training. Mm -hmm. I'm going to experiment with a 24-hour program schedule on our local station. Uh-huh. Now, I'm only thinking, Mulligan, but what sort of a disc jockey do you think you'd make? Oh, uh, well, sir, I think I could make a good disc jockey because I've collected lots of records for years and, and I'm a good authority on music. It's a possibility. Now, where could we fit you in? There's a slot open from 4 a.m. until 8. 4 a.m. until 8, that's a wonderful time slot. There are very few programs on at that time. We're bound to have a big audience. What else is there to look at? Yes, we'll have a captive audience. <laughs> oh, well, do, do I get the chance, sir? Uh, just a second, Mulligan. Miss Evans? Uh, Briggs in programming. How are we coming along with the auditions for that 4 a.m. to 8 slot? You're not serious. 23 of them turned it down, but I only called 22. Oh, you don't want it either. <laughs> Mulligan, I'm going to take a gamble with you. You mean that I have the job, sir? You take over tomorrow night. If you deliver the goods, the job is yours for keeps. I hope I won't let you down, Mr. Briggs. Do you know, Mulligan, I think we've got the jinx licked. Yeah. I think we're going to get along fine together. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Briggs, you didn't, you didn't hurt me. Go, Mulligan. Go. <laughs> Anyone know who that is? <laughs> Mr. Eugene Ormandy and the Boston Symphony Orchestra, bringing you the third movement of The Creep. <laughs> and friends of Television Land, this is your old pal, smiling Michael Mulligan, bringing you a bit of music, a bit of enchantment, a bit of philosophy. <laughs> By the way, the early morning hours of the dawn. So sit back, friends, in your easy chair, take off your shoes, relax, with your old friend, smiling Michael Mulligan. Something wrong with your teeth? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, look who just dropped into our studio. None other than that famous star of the musical comedy world, the glamorous... Miss Nell Mulligan. Uh, Miss Mulligan, tell us, we know that you have a very busy schedule. We want to thank you so much for dropping in to chat with us. What have you been doing lately? Well, I just returned from an extended tour of the kitchen. The pot roast was a huge success, and they held me over to wash the dishes. Yes, I caught your dinner show. It was a huge success. Now, tell us, Miss Mulligan, uh, what do you plan on doing in the future? Well, tomorrow I'm opening in a new vehicle entitled Six Hours in the Laundry Room, starring your dirty shirt. <laughs> well, you're pretty cute. 
Tommy, do you think I'll make it? No, Mulligan, son. Of course you'll make it. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, what smile do you think uh, I wear best? Uh, the aloof smile? Or a little more casual? <laughs> uh, should I give them both barrels right away? Well, what's wrong with your natural smile, dear? <laughs> I forgot how it went. When I was on the stage, I learned that the best way to put yourself across to the audience is just to be yourself. Yeah, yeah you're right. Gee, everybody's been so nice to me. Bill loaned me this recording machine from the transcription department. I I'll cut a record of my voice in a minute and let you hear how it sounds, huh? With your personality, it has to sound good. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present a request record by Miss Pat Hardy, who requests the number for her dream boat, Mr. Mickey Mulligan. <laughs> Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, into our studio has come somebody we rarely have a chance to interview. Mr. Crime Fighter himself. And here he is. All America is waiting to hear what you have to say, sir. What does America want to hear? Uh, what is your name, please? I'm Joe Mulligan. And your occupation, Mr. Mulligan? Police Department. I'm a sergeant of detectives working out of the 23rd Precinct. Oh, you're, you must lead a very exciting life, Sergeant. Oh, right? yeah. I spent the whole day checking R&I files. Just peachy. Yeah. Look, I'm tired. That new captain they brought in from downtown, Otis, has been riding me all day. How a guy like that raced to be captain, I'll never figure out. Speak up, please. For my money, he should be directing traffic in a dead-end street. I should have had that job, and he knows it. You wanted me to say a few words? Well, here they are. You know what I really do for a living? I play stooge for Captain Otis. This morning he says to me, he says, Mulligan, we got to round up that Martin gang. That's what I said to him yesterday. Oh, he's bright, real bright. And then he says to me, now the first thing I want you to do is bring in the squealer. He wants me to bring in the squealer. It sounds easy, doesn't it? Only nobody's seen the squealer for six months, he might be dead. But that's Captain Otis for you. He gets paid for telling other people what to do. Well, thank you very, very much, Sergeant, for that very inspiring talk on teamwork. And so, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> feeling better, dear? This is your old pal, Spire, Mickey Mouse. Matter of fact, I do. Bon appetit. Thanks, Michael, for having me on your show. Anytime, Pop. Well, you know we ought to buy one of those machines. It's a great thing for helping you blow off steam. <laughs> In a year's time, we could compile quite a library. <laughs> well, I've got to get my record set for my program. Where are you going with those? Oh, Michael's going on television tomorrow night in his own disc jockey show. Anything to get those jazz records out of the house, they give me a headache. Why, well, Pop, I haven't played these in over a week. Yeah, but I still hear them. <laughs> well, I'm all set. Oh, look out for the new throw rug, dear. Wow! Oh, Michael! Oh, Michael! Yes, Mom? Now we switch you from the pre-dawn movie to a new show, Insomnia Incorporated. Starring that eager, wide-awake disc jockey, Michael Mulligan. Michael Mulligan! Hi! <clears throat> uh, oh, there you are! <laughs> where, where? <laughs> oh, oh, there you are! <laughs> well, good evening, uh, uh, I mean, uh, good, good morning. I should say. Here it is, good old 4 a.m., ladies and gentlemen. Best part of the day. <laughs> uh, welcome to Insomnia Incorporated. This being my first show, first of all, I'd like to say hello to my mom and pop who are home viewing our show. Hi, Mom. Hi, Pop. <laughs> They're probably more nervous than I am. Next of all, I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking the man who made this all possible for me, Mr. Briggs, Vice President in Charge of Programming for this day. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Briggs, from a royal employee, Mickey Mulligan. <laughs> Hi, friends. This is Mickey Mulligan, still going strong here, whiling away the early morning of the hours, the early hours of the morning. <laughs> just you and I together. The time is just flying by. It's now 5.30. <laughs> well, we sincerely hope you're enjoying our program. I also hope that you're enjoying the records that... I've been playing for you. <laughs> yes, they all my personal collection. <laughs> yes, and next we're going to have a 
selection that uh, was recorded way back in 1951 called Tiger Rag with Louis Armstrong on the harp and Dizzy Gillespie on glockenspiel and the champagne bubble solo will be by Lawrence Welk. <laughs> Well, again, what are you doing here so early? My son Michael's on television, and I want Captain Otis to see him. Then he'll know us mulligans are going places. No kidding. Is Mickey on television? You bet your life he is, and that's more than he can say about his son. But Otis, boy, is only four years old. Hey, what are you standing up for Otis for? I thought you were on my side. Look, Mulligan, we've got to live with the captain, so why don't you try to get along with him? I'll get along with him. Now, come on, Simmons, let's watch his face when he sees Michael on television. Come on. Well, Mulligan and Simmons, something I can do for you? Well, if we're not bothering you, Captain, my son Michael is starring on his own television show. He's on right now. I thought you might like to tune in. Well, all right, we'll look at it for a couple of minutes. Might be interesting. Mulligan, what's the latest on the squealer? Have you gotten in touch with him yet? Still trying to locate him. I promised the commissioner I'd round up that Martin gang, but Well, oh, here we are. Well, so there you've had it, friends. And uh, we're still going strong here. This is your old pal and disc jockey smiling Mickey Mulligan saying, come on now, get out of bed, wake up, wake up. Come on. That's right. Don't carry. <laughs> and now we're going to have another one of these wonderful records. And so here it is. Bop, bop, the stop, stop. <laughs> Mickey Mulligan. The record I'm now playing? Just a moment. <laughs> Can you uh, call back after the record's finished, please? Thank you. Oh, he's great, isn't he? What a personality. Say, did I tell you what my son did yesterday? He's only four years old. Fine. Let's watch the show. Well, folks, I think we've played about all these records. I'll have to look for some new, for some new ones. Well, I think we've seen enough. Let's get back to work. Oh, leave it on. It'll be over in just a few minutes. Here's one here with no label on it. <laughs> be lots of fun to play. Let's just put it on. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, into our studio has come somebody we rarely have a chance to interview. All America is waiting to hear what you have to say, sir. What does America want to hear? Uh, what is your name, please? I'm Joe Mulligan. And your occupation, Mr. Mulligan? Police Department. I'm a sergeant of detectives working out of the 23rd Precinct. Uh -huh, you're well, right. we've heard right. enough. Let's right. get to work. Oh, yeah. I see Leave it on. Check an R and I file. Just peachy. Yeah. Look, I'm tired. That new captain they brought in from downtown, Otis, has been riding me all day. <laughs> How a guy like that race to be captain, I'll never figure out. <laughs> For my money, he should be directing traffic in a dead end street. I should have had that job, and he knows it. You wanted me to say a few words? Well, here they are. You know what I really do for a living? I play stooge for Captain Otis. This morning he says to me, he says, Mulligan, we got to round up that Martin gang. That's what I said to him yesterday. Oh, he's bright, real bright. And then he says to me, now the first thing I want you to do is bring in the squealer. He wants me to bring in the squealer. That sounds easy, doesn't it? Only nobody's seen the squealer for six months, he might be dead. But that's Captain Otis for you. He gets paid for telling other people what to do. Well, thank you very, very much, Sergeant, for that very inspiring talk on teamwork. And so, ladies and gentlemen, until we meet again, this is your old pal, smiling Mickey Mulligan, saying... Uh, thank you, Sergeant Mulligan. Thank you for that very informative talk. Ladies and gentlemen, the opinions just expressed are not necessarily those of the station, this announcer, or his father. Evidently, Mulligan, you're not very happy here. <laughs>
Maybe what you need is Hold a on, change Frank, of we'll plan. We'll records to play for you in just a moment. It's now a we could assign you to uh, was recorded in checking parking meters war. in Azusa. <laughs> well, Captain Otis is listening in, and I, I hope he isn't. Hello? Who? The squeaker? Oh, the squealer. Do you hear that, Captain? It's a squealer. Yes, sir? Yes, I'll try and get that for you. Thank you, sir, for calling. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just had a call from somebody who calls himself the squealer. We've had a request record to be played for Sergeant Joe Mulligan. It is the squealer. He wants to contact me. Mulligan, will you keep quiet? Ladies and gentlemen, the number that the squealer requested was the Dark Town Strutter's Ball, but we don't seem to have it uh, around on any of these recordings. So, uh, well, Mickey Mulligan, he never lets you down, you know. I'm going to play it for you myself and sing it at the piano for you. So if you'll just stand by and... <laughs> Dark Town Strutter's Ball. I'll be down to get you in a taxi, honey. Better be ready by the half past This is the tip off the clues in the worst of that song. Yeah, he wants us to pick him up in a taxi, honey. No, it's the time, half past eight. It's just 35 minutes from now. Don't forget, forget my honey. Two steps, we're gonna have a ball. I'm gonna be there when the band starts playing. Bam, bam. You must be talking about the Martin Gang. What was the next line? I don't know. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll be down to get you in a taxi, honey. You better be ready about half a half a Now, honey, don't be late. I'm going to be there when the band starts playing. Band starts playing. Hello, this is Captain Otis. Connect me with that disc jockey, quick. Smiling Mickey Mulligan. <laughs> yes, Cap Notice. Yes, sir? Play that song again. When you get to the second part, slow down so we can get every word. And keep singing till I tell you to stop. Right away. We'll call. To get you in the taxi, honey Better be ready by the half past eight Now, honey, don't be late I'm gonna be there when the band starts playing Don't forget when we get there, honey Two steps, we're gonna dance some more I'm gonna Downtown dance some ball. Where does that fit? Hey, there's a Ball Street on the south when side the That's the name of the jewelry store on Ball Street Strutters! Strutters Jewelry Store, let's go! Well, all cars, put a ring around Strutter's Jewelry Store on Ball Street. When I play the jelly roll. And now, back to our main studios for a word from Mickey Rooney. Oh, here you are, Mulligan. I just want you to know that our entire organization is proud of the part you played in helping the police round up the Martin Gang. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry that we can't go forward with our original plans, but the world just isn't ready for a 4 a.m. disc jockey show. Oh, I don't, I don't think I'm ready either, sir. Nevertheless, there'll always be a place for you on our staff. Your job as page boy is waiting for you. As a matter of fact, you go on duty in about eight minutes. The future of our network depends upon young men such as yourself who are eager to tackle the job, to toe the mark, to cut the mustard. <laughs> I'm confident, Mulligan, that one day you'll rise to the top. Just keep on your toes and never let them catch you napping. <laughs> Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. Say, I'll buy that, and I hope you folks will, too. That was the good word from the folks that'll bring you our show next week. I hope you'll be watching then, friends. Until then. <laughs> All right, folks.